My name is Shaniqua. Today I'm going to be sharing my story about some childhood sexual abuse that I went through when I was younger. I was born in Louisiana. My mom and dad raised me there. My dad died when I was a baby, so I didn't grow up, you know, with a father. So after my dad's death, she decided to move to Los Angeles because it was a lot for her to deal with that trauma. We were homeless for quite some time and then we eventually were able to, you know, find shelter. We moved around from shelter to shelter a lot. A little bit after my mom met my sister's father, you know, she ended up pregnant with my little sister. We were all staying together. My relationship with my sister's dad was, you know, pretty normal at first. We would all like, you know, go places together. He'd like play with me, he'd take me to the park. I believe I like seen him as like a father figure because uh, he was like, you know, like the only like man in my life. Things were okay you know at first the first time the abuse started to happen with my sister's father i think i was about four or five years old very young my mom and my sister you know they ended up running an errand to the store and he pulled me into their bedroom he closed the door and he laid me down on the bed and pulled my pants down he turned on you know an adult film and then ended up pulling his pants down. I was like very like confused as to what was going on. He ended up giving me whirls then like laying on top of me and you know rubbing his up against mine. I don't really remember much of what happened after that. I just remember that that was just very traumatic. So after it happened we just like everything was played off like it was normal he played it off like you know nothing happened and they got back i believe that he told me like to not say anything that part i don't really remember but it just happened and i never disclosed it to my mom until like later on down in life when i was a bit older so she never knew of that moment i think I was just scared, you know, like, you know, you're a kid. So stuff like that is like just very confusing and conflicting. I must have just been like nervous of like, how is my mom, you know, going to react? Like, am I going to get in trouble? You know, maybe just like the guilt part, you know, as a kid, you don't really understand. Eventually, my sister started being abused. So my mom didn't know anything about my sister's abuse either because my sister never opened up either we both waited and i believe just because like we were just really scared we both waited up until we were in elementary school to disclose that to her so my mother was not with him when we finally disclosed it to her i think i was in fourth or fifth grade and i just remember being at you know my mom's friend's house and like opening up to her about my abuse and my mom's friend was like well you should you should tell your mom you need to tell someone did it ever get reported i'm like no you know i didn't understand anything about reporting anything she was like okay we're gonna talk to your mom about this and i was remember just being very nervous and then finally telling her and she was just like in awe and shocked like she didn't know what to say or like really how to react and i felt like she felt some guilt and, and like shame my sister and i as well as you know my mom's friend you know we all went down to the police station and you know we made that report and we got interviewed i chose to have miss Hitz or my mother's friend you know be with me during the time that the police officer interviewed me just because she made me feel like understood and she made me feel like you know comfortable you know at that time i felt like my mom was just a bit like trying to process her own you know emotions so she was like just not as emotionally there or available when i needed her so the next abuse you know situation that i had to endure was at the age of 10 around the same age that i reported my sister's father this was my mom's boyfriend at the time like on and off he was just very just toxic to be around always just drunk drinking sort of like violent me and my sister we really just didn't like him much but i remember one day just being really sick and i i believe i had the stomach bug so i was just laying in 
bed all day. My mom and my sister, you know, wanted to go to the store. Eddie comes into the room and he looks like looking at me, staring at me, and he asks me, you know, can I give you oral? I'm just like, just very confused and just like, uh, like I can't catch a break. Like, you know, I'm weak, my stomach hurts, you know, like I don't understand this. I just kind of just, I didn't really respond to like what he said, you know, I'm too tired and he ended up just like pulling my pants down and giving me oral pulled my pants back up and told me, you know, don't tell your mom, don't say anything. Basically like threatening me, you know, making me feel guilty. And he pretended like nothing ever happened when they got back. I did the same thing. I just pretended like that didn't happen. I was just very tired. And I never ended up disclosing that abuse until, you know, later on in my life either. The second time that I, you know, disclosed the abuse to my mom, she reacted pretty much the same. She was a bit more, you know, she was more there for me. She apologized. She just felt really bad that, you know, it happened and, you know, she started to cry. So my last uh, sexual abuse experience was just very, like, horrific and it just caused me a lot of conflicted, like, feelings. He came into our lives around the same age that the last abuse happened to me with around 10, 11 years old. He ended up meeting my mom, you know, somewhere uh, on the bus. They just started like seeing each other, you know, very often. One day, you know, came to the house. My sister and I ended up kind of like meeting him in an awkward moment because, you know, my mother and him were being like intimate in that moment. And we ended up catching them and he was like, I'm sorry. That's not how like I wanted it to, you know, introduce myself or to meet you guys. And then we basically, we all stayed up for most of the night just like talking and like getting to know him. And my sister and I like, we really like liked him. He just had like this very like funny, cool, you know, like sweet like personality. And so after that, he started coming around more often. He'd bring us gifts. For Christmas, birthdays, my mom was kind of struggling during Christmas time and birthdays. So, you know, he came around and helped with that. And we were just very happy. Like, we never got that from anyone. And so uh, my mom wanted it to change. She wanted it to move because L.A. was just too much. I guess, you know, the neighborhood was getting dangerous. He suggested we move to San Diego where, you know, his brother was. And so we did. Basically... We're in San Diego, I'm maybe about 12. And I just remember missing him and like just wanting to like see him, you know? We were like seeing him as like a father figure, you know, someone that we looked up to and we were starting to get comfortable with. And so I would call him a lot. And me and my sister, we would talk to him on the phone. And then one day, you know, I talked to him and I told him, oh, I miss you. And you make me feel like just really warm inside. Something very lightheartedly, I didn't mean anything like sexually of it but i think that he took that sexually and i just remember wanting to go visit him and somehow he persuaded my mom that hey i'll watch her for the weekend and i'll come and pick her up you know and i guess that my mom trusted him i trusted him you know and she's like okay i get a break and so one weekend, we go on a Greyhound bus together. He's buying me my favorite food, McDonald's, chocolates, candies, you know, and I'm just feeling like just really good. And we're back at his small little bedroom apartment, which I wasn't really expecting. And then we're just like sitting there and he actually rolls a joint. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know anything about, and he offers you know me to smoke and I was a bit nervous at first but he was like it's not gonna do you like any harm it's natural it's okay so I try it I'm feeling just more I guess at ease and like relaxed and then he turns on an adult film I was just very like confused like whoa like taken back by that I'm like okay and then he's like remember when you told me on the phone that I made you feel warm inside uh, well, you make me feel warm inside too. And that's where I guess he got it all like screwed up, you know, in his head. He 
had like a hard on in his pants. He ended up laying me down on his bed, giving me oral. I'm under the influence. I'm literally like 12, so like this feeling, it's weird at the same time, but it's also like, it's weird and uncomfortable in a weird way, you know? When you're a kid, like you're a growing kid, so your your mind is like, okay, this is wrong, but your body's like saying, okay, like he ended up being the person to give me my first everything, which sucks. He ended up being the person to take my virginity. I was not ready to lose my virginity, but he felt, you know, that I was ready and kind of forced to self upon me when I told him that, you know, it hurt. I didn't want to do this. He was saying it's only going to hurt for a little bit. Then you'll feel better afterwards. It's going to be okay. So that's how I lost my virginity. And I feel like after that, everything just spiraled. It just became like a normal routine, like with him. It just felt normal. And most of the time, he had me under the influence, either smoking or drinking which i shouldn't have been he was grooming me you know a lot of the time and buying me things just to make me feel like okay he cares you know, he loves me he gave me a lot of the special attention and gave my sister crap and made her feel bad about herself a lot of the time and i just remember her wanting to tell she ended up catching us one time and it was like what the heck is this? What is going on? And she was like, I'm going to tell. In my mind, I'm like, no, 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 you know? And he's like, no. So he ends up manipulating her as well, persuading her and ends up buying her things just to get her to, you know, be quiet too. He eventually ended up doing the same thing to her and he would say things like i didn't really want to do that with her she's disgusting he would make up things on daddy which we would call him it was very conflicting because one moment he felt like our protector you know someone we could go to for protection and ask anything you know and we had fun with and he buy us these things and do these things with us then behind closed doors you know he's abusing us he's manipulating he's grooming you know he's putting up a front for everyone everyone thinks he's perfect and he wasn't that abuse um that happened with him went on from i believe 12 to the age of I want to say 17 years old. Stopped briefly when I got pregnant with my oldest. After that, he was like, we should continue. And I, I didn't really want to because I was starting to see through him. I was starting to see like, okay, this is not okay. This is not normal. This is weird. And I think he could kind of see that I was seeing right through it. He was trying to manipulate me into not talking to other boys my age you know I, I didn't want to be with someone who was older than me D was like literally 40 50 years old and I'm literally like a teenager it was a weird relationship you know and that's what made it very conflicting as far as how like it made me feel when I was going through the abuse with it just made me very like I had very like confused like conflicted thoughts you know because he was there for us he did teach us a lot of good lessons and good things he taught us like what to watch out for you know he taught us to stay in school and then on the other end he was doing those sexual things to me the things that he were doing you know like it was feeling nice, but at the same time, my mind is like, I know this isn't right, and I know that we shouldn't be doing this, you know, and especially like if we have to keep hiding it and we have to keep this a secret, you know, um, and he's telling me not to say anything. We're hiding every time, you know, my mom wakes up or things like that. And that's just what made it very conflicting for me because he would just make it seem like everything was fine. After going through all of that abuse, it has affected me in a way to where I became just more like, I would say shy and just not like very open to like many people and not as like talkative, but as well as like, I ended up going through a teenage pregnancy. You know, I ended up 
after losing my virginity, I ended up wanting to explore with boys my age, you know, just not using protection, not understanding the consequences of sex or anything, you know, and going through that teenage pregnancy was just very traumatizing to like, you know, go through at a uh, young age. And then like that has caused me to just overly sexualize like myself, wanting to like show off more. I've gotten into certain situations with an ex-boyfriend of mine. He ended up wanting to make like, you know, adult films together and put them out on the internet. At first I was just not okay with it, but he ended up persuading me and we just ended up making money off of that. And then he ended up somehow persuading me to sell my body. I was not comfortable with that at first. You know, I did have morals. I'm like, no, like, that's unsafe. I tried talking him out of it. He was like persuading me at the time and saying how basically we're low on money. So I ended up doing that. I ended up selling my body for, you know, things that I felt at the time. I felt like I needed to do that. I felt like I had to do that just because we were kind of struggling. Now I'm just working on my healing process with everything. I'm going to therapy and just trying to work through it because I didn't get to work through that. You know, as a child, I didn't get to open up about that or really express it, you know, to anyone but my sister. And I'm just now starting to not like feel shameful of myself. My ex-boyfriend did make me feel shameful for what had happened to me, you know, and made me feel like this was my fault. You know, you let this happen to yourself. You liked it, you enjoyed it. And for some time, I, it, it started spiraling in my head and I started feeling, you know, bad about, you know, myself and second guessing myself, which I shouldn't have. So I'm just now three kids in, taking the steps to just heal you know, hero my inner child and just, yeah. <laughs>